sound speeds, no matter what microphone you're using. And if you're using a relatively inexpensive one, then there's a very real possibility that that microphone is going to have a higher amount of self noise than a different microphone that is a little more pricey. Is that really going to be an issue though? Welcome to the topic of this video. If you're a DJ in a nightclub and you're constantly on a mic speaking to your audience, you can probably deal with a higher noise floor because the microphone noise is going to be lost underneath the music bed that you're playing. And if not, because you kill the music, for example, then probably the buzz of the amps is going to drown it out. In contrast, if you're in an acoustically treated space that is extremely quiet and you're using a quiet microphone like this Rode NT1, you don't have to be right up on that microphone even if you're speaking quietly. You have the luxury of putting it farther away from you, allowing you to perform more, use your hands, maybe jog in place, act, perform, whatever. But if your microphone has a higher self noise, you have to perform closer to it. Otherwise, the noise floor is going to be overwhelming and very noticeable in your recording. The thing to look for in a microphone spec sheet is equivalent noise level. And this is most likely something that you're going to find on a condenser microphone spec sheet. Not that dynamics and ribbons don't make noise. No. No, they definitely do, but a condenser microphone always does because of the nature of the voltage traveling through it. If you need an explanation further, watch that video right there. Dynamic microphones are passive. They're not sensitive and they require absolutely no power to function, but that means that they rely heavily on the quality of your preamps to determine the sound quality. If you have noisy preamps, don't expect this to be a very quiet microphone. Small diaphragm microphones and those made with tube technology naturally have a higher self noise than a large diaphragm condenser. A a large diaphragm condenser typically has a self noise down as low as maybe 3 dBA versus a small diaphragm or a tube technology microphone that might only get down to as low as 10 to 12 dBA. Typically anything under 15 dB of self noise is no problem at all, but the closer you get to 20 dB, the more you're going to start hearing this underlying hiss in your dialogue recording, unless you have a lot of background noise or you're recording in a place with music or something like that in the background too. Then it's not going to be as much of an issue. Another thing to think about is the processing on your recorded vocal track. If you're going out live, you really need a microphone with a lower self noise. But if you're going through a post process, you can have a high self noise microphone and chances are get away with it, provided of course that your signal to noise ratio is correct. What if you did a vocal cording with an appropriate signal to noise ratio and you're going to be putting it through a post process before your audience ever hears it? Under that circumstance, can you run it through a noise reduction and be good? Or is it going to be affecting your sound? Why don't we jump over to the computer and take a look? Here's what we're going to be doing here. Earlier today, I recorded some pink noise on an AKG C535EB, which has 20 dBA of self noise. And then I imported that file into my computer here, where I'm opening up in Reaper a paid program and Audacity a free program where we're going to be completely eliminating the background noise and then comparing those files to the original to see if there's any loss or change of the signal itself. So right now we're in Reaper. What I'm going to do is listen to a little bit of that background noise right here after this. Going to grab a sample of it. And now I'm going to go into refer as a plugin and turn it on to listen and analyze that sound right there. What it's doing now is it's building a noise profile for that. And you can see it's just adjusting a little bit here and there. I'm going to turn this off so it's no longer sampling. And then we're going to basically close this down. Now, when we highlight this entire thing and go to render, it's going to render this entire thing as background noise. Hold on one second. It's going to telling you guys to hold on. That's hilarious. Okay. Live test. What we're going to do here is C535 and then we're going to call this Reaper. Okay. No BG, no background. So I'm going to copy that because I'm going to use the same thing on audacity. We're going to render this file. There it is. Close this. And now we'll open it back up here in a second inside of Reaper. But for right now, we're going to jump over to Audacity and do the exact same thing. But Audacity is a little bit different. In Audacity, right there is a quiet place, same exact quiet place. We're going to go over here to Effect, then Noise Reduction, Get Profile. It's now sampling that the same kind of way that Reaper did, but slightly different. And now we're going to highlight this entire thing, go to Effect, and we're going to go to Noise Reduction and then hit as long as it says reduce there, okay. Now it's going to apply that noise reduction to this entire file. We're gonna highlight this entire thing, go to export, 
export it as a WAV file. I don't like the 16-bit, so I go to other compressed files and do it as a 24-bit PCM. And we're going to save it under here, right there, but this time under Audacity as a name. So there's our original, and here's our Reaper modded one with no background noise. We're going to open both of them into separate tracks. And I'm going to basically verify real quick that they are perfectly in sync. And they are. You can look at that right there. And the peaks are matching up. So now that those are the same, we know that this file is the exact same, except that their background noise was reduced in Reaper and basically eliminated. So now I'm going to route them into, actually, another track right over here. And by doing so, I'm going to be able to overlay the two onto the same visualization, which is going to be through Vox and GoSpan. You guys know I love that program. So now I have a sample. And let's open up routing. Let's double check. Yes, yes, good. OK, so now let's open up our Vox and GoSpan plugin right there. And what I'm going to do is verify that my routing is set to dual mono. If I'm just looking at the left track, oops, wrong thing. I need to come over here and turn this to 100 milliseconds. I'm going to correct for the pink noise angle drop. And I'm not going to add any smoothing. So 100, that's good. And then I'm going to verify the same exact thing on the right. So 100 there, 3 there, and no smoothing. So double checking, right, left, right, left, right, left. And now, if they overlay perfectly, you're going to see one color. And to give you an idea, I'm going to flip back and forth between the left and the right so you see the different colors. And then we're going to overlay the two of them together. And when that happens, we'll see if they're identical or if it does change a little bit when you do the background removal for the background noise. They're in perfect sync. And that's because as long as your signal to noise ratio is working to your advantage, it's going to work great with your background re re removal. Because as long as your background noise is way down low in the mix, there's no issue. And I could even go over here and replace this Reaper one with the Audacity track. And you're going to hear the exact same thing happen here. Uh, we'll go over to here to noise floor, live test. Audacity, where's that file? Right there. Now we'll verify that they're in sync, which they are right there. They look like it. Verify the routing. Yes, still good. And let's open up this program right here. OK, left. So it was already on. I forgot to turn it back off. But it's perfectly overlaid. Therefore, the background noise is not an issue. However, just to at least do our due diligence here, here's something you can also do. If I take this file right here and this file right here, which let's just say you don't have Vox and GoSpan, I can invert the phase of one of them by doing this right here. Then that right there in Vox Go Span is showing the only deviation we have at all between those two tracks because what inverting the phase does is normally your troughs, I'm sorry, your crests and your troughs are going up first, then down. And in a phase reversal, it's going to go trough first, then crest. So basically, it flips all the waveforms that are above the line to the below the line and vice versa. So that's it right there. It's just playing and that's the only little bitty thing that we see at all, which basically is just a little freak out in all honesty because it's way below 70 decibels. So that's not even going to really affect a whole lot. That's probably right there something to do with the noise removal and the noise you know, background noise cancellation and removal, but you don't really even notice it. Now, just to at least try it, that's Audacity. I'm going to see if the one that, that pops up from Reaper is any cleaner, because I would hope it certainly would be for the price that you 
yeah, the price tag that you actually put on something for Reaper. So there we go. Those are perfectly overlaid. I wonder what's going to happen over here. Look at that. It's a different frequency right there. It's extremely quiet though. We're talking a little tiny bit, a little dabble down there. Nothing really to worry about. So in my opinion, background noise, as long as you are pre-recording and then running it through a process, no issues. But you can't get away with this in a live environment because then you're using something more like an expander or a gate probably more likely. And a gate is going to take whatever background noise you have and it's going to simply lower it and drop it out of the mix when you are not talking. So if I suddenly go quiet, the background noise is going to be eliminated. But when I am talking, that background noise is going to be present. And the louder that background noise is, the more you're going to hear it. So if there is like a shh like that right behind that's it, pretty loud, you're going to definitely hear it when I am talking over my voice. So there you have it. Provided that you have an adequate signal to noise ratio, if you're live and recording in a studio environment or someplace very quiet, you need to use a microphone with a lower amount of self noise than you would be if you were in a louder environment where you could get away with a microphone with a higher self noise level. So keep that in mind because that's sound advice. Have a question you'd like answered or want to add something? Be sure to write it in the comment section down below. You can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion. Again, comment section down below or you can email me at soundspeeds at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice.